Welcome back to part three. Tonight, we are gonna be grinding the tang, drilling the holes for the tang, and grinding the bevel of the knife. First step is gonna be marking the tang in preparation for grinding, drilling, and tapering the tang. Did you get all that? Oh, come on. Where are we putting oh, this? Oh, don't pull it away from me. Go to the side first. Where are we going? Just put it on the floor very gently. Watch your fingers. Uh, it's on my toes. Ah, uh, uh, blocks. Uh. That was way more difficult than it should have been. I'm applying some uh, layout fluid to my handle area here so we can actually scribe our center line down the tang. Now this isn't gonna be a precision because this is a brute to forge finish. So I'm gonna be taking my measurements off of this brute to forge Ricasso. It's a forged finish, so it's not really dead flat, but it will give us something relatively close to center of the whole knife. Okay, I'm finding the, a flattest spot around this area of the knife, pressing down, finding the center. Just eyeballing the center? Yeah, I have laser beam eyeballs, so. That's cool. You do? Yeah. Me. All right, let's see. It's good. Ready for the next step, Chad? Yeah. We're going to begin grinding our tangs. Now, uh, where's the Sharpie? Sharpie? Silver Sharpie. I don't know. I like okay, this step is incredibly crucial on a brute to forge knife. Kind of we're gonna begin grinding our tang. Yep. We cannot grind into our blade that's brute to forge, right? Or else that ruins the finish. Yep. There's no going back after that. Oh gosh. So what we need to do is carefully grind and work our way up to this point, basically where you want your handle to go. So if your handle's going right here, you put, draw a line for yourself right there or right there for the belt grinder. And you swear out not to go past it. Not to go past that line. Okay. So we're just gonna use the belt grinder to flatten this out a bit. Just looking down the knife to see the thickness of the knife. I'm trying to get this thickness pretty even. And uh, as I start getting closer to, the, to my line, I start going at an angle on the belt, getting more at a time on the belt. That's gonna make sure that you get more flat. It can be really easy to get a dip. If you make too big of a rut in here, to grind the rut out, have to grind on the high spots. That's going to either mean thinning down your tang a whole lot or grinding into your blade a whole lot. So go nice and slow. Make sure that you don't get dips. These are just nice flat surfaces.
looks pretty good. Ease your way up a little bit. You don't want to taper it too much before we drill the hole. Hold it more vertical. There you go. Now that we've gotten the tang flattened in preparation for drilling the holes, we need to die cam the flats of the tang to mark our hole spots. So I'm going to be using this blue layout fluid that CRC sent me. Uh, this stuff works great if you're doing a wider surface. If I'm doing just like the tang of the knife, I'll use a little brush on, but the spray works great for wide stuff. There you go. Just do one side. Just one? Yep. That look like it's in the center. We're good. So now we have our holes drilled in the tang. Our tang roughly flattened. We are going to begin tapering the tang a little bit. This is where we're going to use our reference mark, strong down the tang a little bit more. So I'm going to first start by hollow grinding between my pin holes a fuller in the, in the tang. You have to be careful that the fuller doesn't go to the edges of your tang. This? <laughs> it's head your face. I'm <laughs> scared. This fuller is going to allow me to grind the taper in the tang much faster and easier. Understand? You gotta do something hard to make it easy. Watch and learn. Start using the edge of the wheel. Just his heart, his heart rate going bum 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 bum. Um. <laughs> oh God! You can really mess it up right now. Now it's time to actually taper the tank. So we're gonna do that by applying pressure towards the end. This is very similar to when we first ground the tank, but we're gonna be putting more towards the end now and then feathering it up. Now, uh, where's that silver Sharpie? Right here, do not cross. Weep, weep, do not cross, okay? After we get to that line, we're gonna finish it on the disc grinder. The disc grinder creates a much, much more flat finish, an extremely flat finish. Belt grinder removes material quickly.
knife feels very different after you taper the chain. <laughs> Is that all you got? If you come over here and you put pressure right there, it's going to go. You got to jerk it out of your hands. Got it? You see just how not flat the belt grinder is. Well, the, the closer you get to the edge, the faster it's going to grind, because the, the larger diameter. You've got a highest, higher SFM, the larger the wheel gets. Down here, it's just a two inch diameter wheel. It's pretty slow grinding. Chad, you gotta stop doing that in the video. <laughs>
Now I'm going to really start eyeballing my edge. The thing where it dips in, wiggles, and squiggles. I can tell this is some hard metal. Hard metal. I can tell. I'm grinding it. Probably like 61 Rockwell. 60. I barely tempered these things. Eating Subway while we're trying to grind knives. Good video. Make sure you're putting enough pressure towards the edge so that you're not grinding the back. 